Okay. All right. So uh, we're we're going. I'm going to show some pictures because these are the buy-in. These are the buy-ins. Uh, it was a nothing burger, and do we not have the other one? I guess not. Anyway, uh, we're just going to have a general conversation. I'm going to go on a little bit of a rant. I'll keep it brief. So let's first talk about the fact that we're actually filming this in the middle of the main event of Double or Nothing. Um, there was nothing past MJF returning that I cared about. Um, it every no match was under ten minutes. It was twelve matches, and they're going past fucking midnight on the East Coast. AEW, I don't know what the fuck you're doing, but this is not acceptable. No, you cannot do twelve matches this late on a Sunday. I don't care if tomorrow is a fucking holiday. And you know what? They learned their fucking lesson. The next pay per view is on Saturday. Yeah, they actually well, changed the date. Well, but I think the next pay per view is during the NFL season, so Daddy Khan needs that Sunday to be free, so that I don't. Tony I, can I, 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 I don't care. You know what? I don't care. I don't care because that is the perfect night for everything wrestling. Yeah, you have the day to watch the wrestling and enjoy it on Saturday, and then you have the recoup day on Monday. It's like going to a concert. You don't do a concert on fucking Sunday, right? Anyway. Uh, we are not. We did not watch this match, but I'm just going to assume what's going to happen. It's going to be chaos. There's going to be no actual wrestling. They're going to fight everywhere, and nobody's going to care. Uh, I'm going to give it I mean, I mean, help. a thumbs down. And I mean, fuck I mean, you. hell, I mean, hell. The, the crowd died like halfway through. Oh my god, they were silent, silent. God, um, this match was this match. This match should have been done on dynamite. No one cares. Completely unnecessary. It would have been a really good dynamite match. Yeah. Um, but it was like, 15, even, it, was, it was 15 minutes. Or even a pre-show match. I don't really care about that yeah, one. Yeah, and people are like, well, what about Orange Cassidy going back to the... I don't give a shit. Yeah. We all, we already had this match. That's the problem. We've had this match. Trent Beretta loses and loses and loses. Guess what he did here? He lost. So guess what? Both of these two little goobers get a double fuck you. They, they get, they're goofy goobers. Let's move on to the next one. Ugh. So I'm going to assume that Adam Copeland broke his ankles with that dumbass dive. What was the fucking point? Right. This was, it was so dumb. Oh, so stupid. All right, now, moving on. Now, now the pop with Gangrel was fine. Um, it went way too long. There was no reason for it. <sighs> there was and, a reason. I think there's a reason that WWE did not want to do this spot. Because remember, WWE wanted to do it like a couple of years ago with Gangrel. Yeah, and they never did it because look at the result. Nobody cares. No. Nobody cares. No. And, then, and, and then now there's potential that Adam Copeland is hurt because he wanted to do a dive off the top of the fucking cage. Yep. He's never done anything like that, to, to my knowledge, other than maybe the spear off of the ladder, but that's the only thing that I can remember. <sighs> it was for the TNT champion, too. Nobody cares. Um, It was fine. No one cares. It was fine. Uh, Juice Robinson is back, and that's good because his injury was very severe. So I'm glad but to see no that. But no one cares. Um, but yes, uh, uh, Bang Bang Gang won the Again. Unified Champions. Orange Cassidy thumbs up. I'll be nice. Nobody cares. Okay. <sighs> God, fuck. Skip this match. This match was trash. Chris Jericho, because you won. Um, nobody cared. It was, it, a, was... it was a mess. The pacing was horrible. And... Uh, nobody looked good in this no. match. Nobody looked good in this match. Like, at all. This was so... This match happened? This was so not necessary. This was... Uh, this was 18 minutes! This match was 18 minutes. And this match happened? Question mark? God, it was a slog. Kanosuke Takeshka does not care about wrestling anymore. No. And here's the problem. He's like he's like 49 years old or something. Kanosuke? Yeah, he's like old. Are you sure? Yeah, I'm pretty sure. Kanosuke has the tools for everything. He is he's Or a, they made him they made me think of a Shibata. They're the same person. You you might be thinking of Katsuyori Shibata because I'll, You know what? They're they're both the same person. They're both they're both Japanese K sounding wrestlers. Again, I don't fucking care. They can all be Kazuchika Okada for all I care. All I know and is the that they're is old and dumb and, 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 the and fun, Japanese. And you know what the funny thing is that Kazuchika Okada is 
literally on the show. <laughs> but, uh, uh, but again, the point, the point being is that I don't fucking care about the Japanese. Kanosuke, if you really want the love for wrestling back in your world, get away from AEW. You Like, run. Yeah, run. Seriously, let your contract expire, get your bag, and go somewhere where you're going to be appreciated. Like, Use TNA or WWE or DDT again if he wants to go back to Japan. I think he misses Japan. I, I think, think that's where he is. Um, but this was not for the world title. This was an eliminator match. So once again, why? So no one cares. And no one cares about John Moxley. Oh, oh, and also Kanosuke was buried. He he did not look like right. credible Fred at and, all. And and John Moxley's old and he's tired and he's a drunk. So Yep. <sighs> this <sighs> was a botch filled pandering nightmare to an egotistical i'm hoping self-centered narcissistic brat i hope that this is a nightmare i wake up tomorrow that ending. and mercedes monet doesn't exist and that will nightingale is still the tnt champ the T TBS, tbs the tbs champion sorry here's the thing I, I, just, the, I, I hope and pray that, that there, there is a, there is a drastic difference between somebody who gives a shit and somebody who doesn't. Will Nightingale gave a shit. She is popular. She has the tools, and given the right training. But guess what, Daddy? Again, again, Tony's not paying for this himself. This is his chore money for mowing the lawn from Daddy. <laughs> Or money for mowing the lawn. So, so Tony Khan is getting paid his allowance to hire Mercedes Monet to do some fucking stupid dances. Ten million dollars a year, and she, ten million dollars, and, and then this this was the match for her debut. It was it was a shit sandwich. I think I, I, I mean I mean I do, think I think I've gotten better shit sandwiches from Subway. So do you think we should probably pencil this in for possibly the worst match of the year? It, it, it's it's now a, now I wouldn't say worst match of the year, but if we're, it's, if, it, if, we, if we're gonna do if we're gonna do a comparison of hype versus actual execution, oh god yes, this this thing sank like the Titanic, like it was. Literally. I mean I mean I've seen better Holocaust gas chambers <sighs> than this. My god. Jesus I haven't Christ. seen any. Uh, but that Monet maker was so horrible, I cannot believe she won. This was, the, like, this bad was trash. Bad tr Trash is nice. The, God, it was so bad. And guess what? This match was better! But compared to these two, this was literally Ric Flair, Ricky Steamboat. This match was good. I yeah. liked this match. It wasn't. It wasn't great, but it was better than the trash that Mercedes Monet shit out of her butthole. Yeah, these two cared. Yeah. And, you know, it's like Tony Storm gets a lot of flack for the gimmick, but I thought she actually did pretty good. I think part of it is because Serena Deeb is a really good wrestler. Well, yeah, because she was trained by WWE. So she was Tony Storm. Then to an extent, uh, Tony Storm went to Shimmer and Shine, and uh, yeah, she no did some stuff in Stardom, that doesn't too. Count. That doesn't count. It does count. No. Shimmer and Shine, any, anything anything outside of WWE doesn't count. Oh, so. my God. You're really, you're really a fed simp, aren't you? <laughs> uh, we were kind of through this match. Uh, it was not good. This was... It was... Uh, again, the whole show just kind of died out. Yeah. Well, after, after MJF showed up with his henna tattoo of... Uh, of his of stupid little ankle thing. I think that's it. Oh, oh, and then oh, oh yeah. this, actually, actually, really, this match was actually really good. There were a lot of scary spots, though. I was not a fan. Um, of those. the spot where Will Osprey landed on his head for the ten millionth time scared the shit out of me. Um, he I'm did, glad he, that he walked. He, he also and he he's, still he still managed to put on a banger. Yeah. Um, I'll, I'll give I'll give Will Osprey all the credit in the world. He he should have been signed with the WWE. Mm -hmm. <laughs> But he's, he was afraid of the grind. He was. Uh, Roderick Strong is a very underrated wrestler. Oh, is, absolutely. It's like his match with Kyle O'Reilly at the last pay-per-view at Dynasty was also really good. We always talk about the opponents of Roderick Strong. Let's talk about Roderick Strong. He's really – he's a common denominator in all of these matches. Yeah. 
So it's Robert like Robert Strong is really good at his craft. He really he always has been. Yeah. He did really good stuff with the North American champion. But again, he was part of the Vince McMahon regime. So Yep. Uh so he uh Will Ospreay won with the um uh Stormbreaker. Adam Cole came out and ran down. MJF came out. He has returned. He signed with AEW, unfortunately. He's a moron. Uh we all make mistakes. He's a young kid. It happens. Yeah. I mean, he was probably making it under duress at gunpoint, but you know what? We're just not they probably he probably got a lot of money for it, but it's like, what are we gonna do now? Well, no, yeah, a lot of allowance money from Shahid Khan. Also, Adam, if am, am I the only one who thought that Adam Cole was one hundred percent buried? And MJF cannot keep WWE out of his fucking mouth. He dressed like Triple H during his return, and from two thousand two Triple H yeah. literally had the same coat. Uh, he name dropped Vince McMahon for the tenth time. Yeah, that's true. Within the span of like six months, it's ridiculous, dude. You are a really good speaker. You, the fact that you have to drop WWE all the time shows pretty much everybody that you want to be there. You dress right. like Triple H. You talk about Vince McMahon. You want to be in WWE. Right. The fact is, is that they did not give you the money that you believed your worth right. because you were being overpaid in the first place. Cody Rhodes, as an example, went to WWE and with all the money from merch, keep in mind of all the merch money that you're getting from that shit. Mm -hmm. The wrestlers talk about all the time that they, they get like five figure checks from their merch alone when they work with WWE. Don't you think maybe a little bit more of a lower ball contract, but then maybe a really nice merch package would be good for you? And look at all the stuff that's happening with the wrestlers outside of WWE. Right. You get like, you get like at least New, York, mean, New mean, York Times bestsellers, right. Hollywood movie stars. Where are those in AEW? Again, it's a cult. So. That that little that little cute little ankle thing. So number one, do you really I, do you really think it's fake? It's fake. It's henna. It's a henna, and even if it wasn't a henna, look at the position. It's going to be underneath the boot the entire time. Um, also, if you do get that, you're officially no better than Nexium. Yep, which you're is an MLM cult, like like a an actual like cult. Uh, they they were literally a sex cult. Yeah, I. So, so I, 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 thought, want, I, I, want, I, I want all the AEW simps to get that ankle, to get the ankle tattoo, like an actual ankle tattoo. I think I think somebody actually got a portrait of Tony Khan tattooed on them. Yeah, yeah. So that person is part of the cult. It's Just a like cult. All of you are going to be also any anybody who gets a WWE tattoo is part of a cult. Yeah, like you don't. You, it's it's just cringe. It's so cringe. And I have a tattoo, and right. I've I've done tattoos in the past. Also, by the way, whoever did, if, if that's a real tattoo, maybe you should go back to being an apprentice because that shit was fucking ass. That thing is going to look right. like a muddy mess in 10 years. Oh, absolutely. <sighs> Anyways. Um, double or nothing. Uh, overall thoughts and a thumb rating. It started out pretty strong. It kind of, it kind of died. Yep. It just it just died. It died to death. So what I'm going to do, because I, I didn't get, I didn't watch obviously all of it. I watched enough. I'm going to say that I like the show, but the pacing I'm was, gonna give it an orange Cassidy thumbs up. I'm down. I'm gonna give it an orange Cassidy thumbs up. Nothing within the matches other than maybe the last ones offended me. Um, but the pacing was horribly all over the place. And I've seen better double or nothings. Dynasty was better. Yeah. This was terrible. It was terrible. Also, please stop doing Sunday shows. It's not good. And don't do shows more than like three hours or yeah. four hours. Like we're we're creeping up an hour number five. Like the, these, I mean, the people who are there have been there for five hours. The sh the, like the pre-show started at four, and that place was pretty filled up by that time too. Yeah, and it's nine o'clock, and they're still doing the show. As we speak. There's a reason why WWE does WrestleMania on two nights. There's a reason why uh, that one WrestleMania where I think, what was it? It was almost like seven hours long. They decided to do two nights Yeah, now. and after that, they decided to do two nights. <laughs> it's a wonderful fucking war.
Right. Um, I, I don't care if they like seven matches per night. Right. Uh, so usually we uh, don't do the shows this late, but uh, next week we will not be doing a show. Mothership will be in town. Yep. Then the show after, we will be covering two. We will be covering um, Dominion. Mm -hmm. And then, what was the what was the second one? Well, Battleground takes place on that Sunday. Oh, Battleground, yes, yes. Well, Battleground. no, no, Battleground takes place on that Sunday. So I thought, I thought no, it takes place on Saturday. It takes place the same day. It takes place on the 12th. It takes place on the same day. I am like 99.9. .9. Okay, here, fill a buster while I figure it out. Um... So anyway, all right. So uh, Dominion is uh, June 9th. and I actually had it pulled up, which is actually really good because then I can. Yep, June 9th and June 9th. They're both Perfect. on Saturday. Well, look at that. <laughs> We're so smart here, guys. So uh, we'll be covering both of those not next week, but the week after. But if you enjoyed this show, remember to like, subscribe. We'll be coming back with drama and news and maybe a match. And as always, be majestic.